Hey, what's up you guys? Today I thought I would give you a tour of my collection of SF Masterwork books. I currently have 16 of these and I do have quite a lot of the same authors as you'll see, but I am interested in expanding my author collection and just reading like a bunch of new authors after I finish these. I have read most of them to be honest. I think there's four or five that I haven't read so far, but Overall, I've enjoyed most of them, so I'll talk about what I thought about them just briefly and what they're about. And I also just want to talk about why I would recommend these books in general, like these specific editions. And, you know, just in case anyone is like thinking of getting them and they're like, oh, I don't know if it's like good quality and stuff. I thought it would be interesting for me to give my opinion now that I've obviously read quite a lot of them. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and please subscribe. And let's get started talking about the books. So when we talk about why I like and dislike these editions, the main thing that I really like is the quality of the front covers. They're always super colourful. The actual paper quality themselves is thick and the artwork I think is original to like the collection. I'm not really completely sure about that but all the artwork is like pretty consistent across the books and I just love it how bright and colourful they are. I also like that when you put the spines together they look really nice on a shelf. They're consistent with like the size of like the author's names and the title for the most part. And the only difference being like this one, the book's obviously a lot thinner so the author had to be on the same line, I don't know if that's in focus in. But for the most part they're really consistent. The one thing they aren't consistent in though is the font on the inside. Some of them are much smaller than others. So for example this font is quite small but then this font is much larger and then this book here the font is like an actual different font itself I think I don't know that's the one thing I don't like is that they aren't always consistent um with the actual you know quality of the paper inside no not the paper just like the font uh, especially the size like I like bigger font so some of them are smaller and some of them just aren't printed as well which is interesting because for the most part they are like really high quality like the paper inside is like thick and you know the print is like really clean then you just get occasional ones that aren't like that so that's one thing to consider but I do think overall in terms of like aesthetics I really just love how bright and colourful the covers are and how they all look together on a shelf that is like one of my biggest things and also the introductions that they give are never like overwhelming and they don't spoil the ending and stuff like that they are only about five-ish pages six pages each normally and they just give you like a little bit of historical background to when the book was released and some contemporary reviews from the time and you know why it is now considered a masterwork and they just get straight to the point which I really like. So as for my collection I'm going to go in reverse alphabetical order just because I have more to say about the ones at the top of the alphabet. So first of all I have five HG Wells books. I have The Island of Dr Moreau which I just reviewed in my last video and this is about a scientist who is experimenting on animals and creating kind of animal-human hybrid type creatures and it's really dark, really scary actually at times. It has like a lot of horror in it and body horror as well and I really love this but if you want to see my full thoughts go check out my last video. Same for The First Men in the Moon, I reviewed that in my last video as well. This one is about two men who create a new um, was my god element and they use that to make a spaceship and then go to the moon where they discover a colony of aliens on the moon and I enjoyed this for the most part but again my full thoughts are my last video I loved it up until the very end but I overall did enjoy this one and then the food of the gods I also reviewed in my last video and I didn't love this one as much I loved the concept this one is about scientists who create this um, like food supplement that when given to anything that grows turns them into giants. So we have like giant animals, giant humans and giant plants. And it's such a cool concept but it doesn't really get fully realised in my opinion. But again, if you want my review on this, check out my last video as well. Um, and that'll be linked in the description. And that's my last plug for my last video. I also have The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. And this one is about a scientist who creates a uh, kind of like, not potion, but he makes himself go invisible anyway. And then he goes mad with power and thinks that he can then take over the world by being invisible. And I really enjoyed this. I think that it is very modern feeling and I definitely want to reread it soon. If you enjoyed the most recent adaptation of this, 
this is completely different because this was written in like the late 1800s so obviously the new adaptation was like a modern remake so it doesn't really have that much in common at all but I just love like the character in this, the scientist, as he kind of goes into like madness with, you know, obviously being invisible and trying to get all this power. And I just thought it was really interesting and well written. And then the last H.G. Wells book I have is The War of the Worlds. And this one is my favourite. And I actually don't own The Time Machine, but I have read that before. But yeah, The War of the Worlds is so good. It is just about aliens coming to Earth, attacking London and how the humans respond to this. And... It is so modern feeling like you would read this and think it was written like in the last 20 years to be honest in my opinion i think that the characters are so well done and just like the horror of aliens attacking london is just like perfection so the next book i have is dying of the light by george rr R. martin who's obviously most well known for the game of thrones series i have not read this and i don't really think it sounds that interesting to me my dad gave me this one it is about just a man returning to a dying world and the woman that he is like left behind there. I don't know. I probably will read it at some point because I want to just read all of these but it's quite thick and I just don't know that much about it. Even the blurb like it doesn't tell me much to be honest. And this is also the one I was given the example for for like the text is just like printed really badly in this one. I don't know why it's just this one specifically like none of the others are like this. So it just shows like the inconsistency of the text printing but yeah. I don't know about much about that one to be honest. Next I have two books by the Strugatsky brothers who are Russian authors. I have Monday starts on Saturday and I have Hard to be a God and I have read both of these but I did not actually enjoy either of them very much. They were both two stars to be honest. Hard to be a God is about researchers going to this like planet where the people there are basically stuck in like the middle ages like equivalent of like earth years if that makes sense and like getting involved in like the politics and stuff there and I don't know it was okay but I think that the Strugatsuki brothers have a really unique way of writing where it's very whimsical and fantastical and things don't really really make sense. Monday Starts on Saturday is about a man who like goes to this like research facility and gets like a job there I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly and then just like a lot of weird things happen but I fully just did not understand what was going on in this book. It felt really disjointed and I did not enjoy it, to be honest. So, I don't know. I've been recommended another book by them. I don't know which one it was. I can't remember right now, but I don't know if I want to read it. I have got it on my Kindle because it was like 99 pence, but yeah, I'm not a fan of the Strugatsky. And if I'm saying that wrong, I apologise. Russian names are hard. <laughs> um, and they're Arkady and Boris are their actual names. So next I have an author that I have a weird relationship with, which is Ursula K. Le Guin. Last year, I said she was one of my favourite new authors, and that was because of these two books, The Word for World is Forest and The Lathe of Heaven. This one is about colo colonialisation and humans going to this planet, which is like a big forest planet, basically, um, and like using it for resources and turning the local indigenous people slash aliens um, into slaves. And there's a lot of interesting conversations in that and I just loved it. I thought it was so well written. I thought the writing was beautiful. I thought the social issues were super interesting and, you know, still relevant today. And then, um, well, okay. And then the other one I loved actually was The Lathe of Heaven. And this one is about a man whose dreams change reality and then a therapist who's supposed to be helping him then uses his dreams to make the world the place that the therapist wants it to be like he influences by using hypnosis um the man who is like sleeping and makes him like dream things into reality and yeah i love this one as well i thought it was really interesting i thought it was so well done like how basically so like one of the things the therapist or psychologist i should say not therapist psychologist wishes for is or hypnotizes him to do is make like racism disappear but then the man when he's asleep when he's thinking of making racism disappear basically then just makes every single person on earth the same and then there's like no culture and you know just everything like that basically everything goes wrong and I just thought it was so well done and I absolutely loved it and then we move on to the other books by her so The Dispossessed I read it a few months ago and I honestly could not really tell you what it's about it's about a scientist who 
has like invented this like device and it's just causing like a like, lot of like political issues and stuff. I don't really know. I did not enjoy it to be honest. I didn't even realize until I was almost done that the chapters were going like one chapter was the present day and then one chapter was from the past. I fully did not even realize that was a thing. I just thought the story was like really disjointed and it was making me so confused. And then once I realized that's what was happening, um, I was like, oh my God, of course, like that makes so much more sense. But by that point it was like too late. So <laughs> I just really did not enjoy this one. And then the one I'm reading right now is like her most famous sci-fi book, I would say, and that's The Left Hand of Darkness. And this is about a scientist slash, not really a scientist, more of a researcher who is on this ice planet where the people there do not have any gender. They are, you know, just genderless unless they are mating, which happens like, I don't know like how often, but once every few months or anything, they have like a mating period and then they just randomly go either male or female. They don't have any choice about it. And then it's all about like how that influences their culture and stuff. So it's a really interesting premise, but I just, um, I'm not enjoying it that much. I'm over halfway or just about halfway through it. And I don't know, I just think it's a little bit boring. Um, and then the gender thing isn't really even fully realized because this was written in the sixties. So even though everyone is genderless, the pronouns that she has written for everyone is he, because like she says this thing about how like basically like, he is like the default kind of, I don't know. I just think that the ideas are interesting, but it's just not fully realized in the best way. Next, I have one of my favorite books of 2019, and that is Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. This is about a man who has a severe learning disability, kind of, I'm assuming it's autism, but they don't fully state that. I don't even know if autism was like a diagnosable thing back when this was written, but basically he is then treated like a lab rat and given this um, experiment that then makes him super smart. And then it's about how intelligence influences you and the kind of pitfalls of being super intelligent and stuff. And it was so heartbreaking at the end. I don't want to spoil it, but it's a really sad book. And I really enjoyed it. However, Monica, one of my picture friends, really didn't like it. And she had a strong like issue with how just like things were portrayed in this. So I don't know, I want to reread it and like give it some second thoughts. But when I did read it back in 2019, I absolutely loved this. And even now, like even though I know Monica has some issues, I would still highly recommend it. I thought it was super interesting and again, really heartbreaking as well. This next three, I have not read, or this is the last three as well. So I have Dangerous Visions, which is edited by Harlan Ellison. And this was super influential back when it was released. It is all about new wave sci-fi, or not about new wave sci-fi. It basically is like new wave sci-fi stories um, and it was highly influential in changing the sci-fi genre into what it is today. New wave sci-fi, as far as I'm aware, was kind of just authors getting a bit sick of the classic sci-fi tropes and bringing in a lot more social issues. So for example, Ursula K. Le Guin talking about like colonialization and gender and stuff like that into sci-fi books. That is part of the new wave sci-fi movement as far as I'm aware. And yeah, this is really thick, but it has um, 33 different stories in it. So I'm interested to get to it, but I only actually bought this a few days ago. So I haven't read anything yet. And then the last two I have are by Philip K. Dick. And this one, I have a Valis, which is printed differently, but I think, because um, the thing about sci-fi masterworks is they had like an original collection and then they reprinted a lot of them. This um, is a completely different material from all the other ones. So I think this is from like the old collection because it is um, really beautiful and this was like second hand. But yeah, Valis is about um, artificial intelligence, I'm pretty sure. I don't know anything else about it other than that. And I have The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch. And this one is about a drug that makes the world go crazy or something, not crazy, but you know, turns the world around. And I don't know much else other than that. To be honest, I've been putting off reading these two because I read The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick and did not like it at all. It was one of my least favorite books of 2019. And I just, um, see you can actually tell on camera, like these ones, they're like matte finish. And then this one is like shiny, plasticky. But this is the only one I have that's like that. But yeah, um, I don't know, like Phil K. Dick, I just did not enjoy The Man in the High Castle at all. So I've been nervous to give him another try, but obviously I want to read all of these at some point. So I definitely will get to these eventually. So that was my collection. It's not super big. It was only 16 books, but hopefully um, this was interesting. And obviously if you are interested in buying SF Masterworks, but you weren't sure if you'd like them or not in terms of like the actual quality and stuff, 
hopefully this was interesting and useful to you. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and definitely comment down below which of these books are interesting and also if you have any recommendations of other books that were in this series, like the FF Masterwork series, let me know because I'm obviously looking for more to fill out my collection a little bit more. So again, thank you for watching, please leave a like and I will see you in my next video.